states matter where, where the candidates are traveling. So where do the Trump and Biden campaigns go from here? Joining me now to discuss Bill McKinley, a former White House cabinet secretary under former President Donald Trump and Connor o. Callahan, a Democrat running for Arizona's first congressional district. Love having Democrats, Republicans on at the same time. But let's keep it civil, right? We're not like the other shows. Uh, Bill, uh, Nikki Haley's out of the race, but her coalition made up what? Roughly 30, 35 percent of the Republican Party. Do you think Former President Trump can appeal to Haley voters over the next few months. Does he even want to appeal to them? I th look, I think after in the next few weeks, and first, it's not 35 percent of the Republican vote. I think a number of those states were open primary votes. We had some Democratic uh, crossovers. But yes, there are a lot of uh, Haley supporters that the Trump campaign's going to need to court to um, get their support if they're going to be successful in November. I think they've got a great shot. We saw a State of the Union last night where the president really gave a convention speech that was a bit angry and it was partisan and it wasn't designed to try and bring the country together. And I think if he continues to strike that challenges that American families and small businesses are facing, I think President Trump is going to be able to get those Haley supporters and be successful in November. Connor, Arizona is a battleground state, and the district that you are running in, uh, I was looking at it, very, very competitive. Polls show Mr. Biden is down. President Biden is down right now in Arizona. Did the president's State of the Union speech change anything? If you ask Bill, he thought it was an angry speech. I'm imagining you had a different take on the State of the Union. I, I did have a different take on the State of the Union. I think it was a fiery speech from Biden, so I agree with that, uh, you know, as, as Bill said. But was it more of a campaign speech than a typical State of the Union? Maybe. But I think what it showed the American is that Joe Biden absolutely still has fire in his belly. He was going toe to toe with hecklers in the audience like Marjorie Taylor Greene. He is ready to rock and roll for this 2024 campaign season. I do think that those Nikki Haley supporters are, are a big question mark at a minimum for Donald Trump. You know, how many of those people will come back around versus how many of those people are never Trumpers? And in races across the country, including here in Arizona, that will probably be decided by less than 10,000 votes at the presidential level, you know, that really matters. And I think last night Joe Biden showed that he has a vision and he is ready to go another four years. And it's going to be a very interesting campaign season here in Arizona and across the country. Bill, I want to push you on, you know, a little bit about this appeal to the Haley uh, supporter here, because just minutes after Nikki Haley dropped out on Wednesday, former president posted on social media that he trounced her uh, uh, on Super Tuesday. Just a few days ago, he said, we don't need the Mitt Romneys in the Republican Party anymore. I, I don't know. I, 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 are, 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 is he really going to appeal to that moderate Republican or is he OK letting him go to President Biden this election? I don't think they are going to President Biden this election. I think that the American families, as I said before, are suffering. And I don't think uh, President Biden is the right home for them to land. What I think is going to happen, and, and one final comment on the State of the Union, that was not a speech designed to expand President Biden's uh, base or, or uh, circle of support. That was something trying to shore up his progressive uh, uh, factions in the party that are departing him. We saw the pro-Palestinian protesters on the way to the State of the Union. That was not a speech where he's trying to appeal to Republicans. If anything, that is a speech where he is trying to shore up his Democratic support. Now, back to President Trump. I do think that the way that this has been going uh, with President Biden, you see his historic low uh, approval numbers. You see in Michigan, where um, uh, Muslim Americans and, and Arab Americans in the Dearborn area and other places are voting uncommitted or just not showing up to the polls. Michigan, in this cycle, is going to become the new Florida and Georgia of the past two cycles. And right now, President Biden has a real problem there. And we see that uh, uh, President Trump does have an enthusiasm advantage over President Biden. And I think that's really going to uh, pay dividends. Nearly 300,000, though, people in, uh, in uh, Michigan voted for, for Nikki Haley, though. Important to keep that in mind. Uh, Connor, the president is facing a host of criticisms on things like immigration and the economy. I mean, you're running for Congress. I'm going to push you on something here. Would you campaign, sure. have your photo taken next to Joe Biden in Arizona right now? 
Absolutely. In fact, you mentioned in your graphic that Vice President Harris is going to be out here. I was invited to spend some time with her and look forward to doing that. I mean, look, we have two choices here. We can either go backwards to the chaos and, and dysfunction of Donald Trump, or we can stay the course with what's working, which is President Biden. Inflation's come way off its, its highs. Unemployment is at near record lows. Unemployment among minorities is at historic lows. Stock markets at all time highs. Is there will still work to be done? Absolutely. We need to address price gouging, which President Biden touched on last night. And we do need to do something at the border. Americans like immigration. They don't like chaos. They don't like disorder. And that's what's been going on at the border, quite frankly. The president and the Senate has tried to work on this in a bipartisan fashion. The Republicans basically wrote the bills, the latest attempt at bipartisan immigration reform. And Donald Trump got them to kill it because he'd rather run on the chaos and dysfunction at the border than actually fix it. So he's basically like, look, let's just have nine more months of complete chaos and disorder because that's what I want to hit Biden on. How terrible is that? So I think what you're going to see in the coming weeks are probably some executive actions from Joe Biden. I like bipartisan solutions, but if our Republican colleagues aren't going to work with us to get things done, then we're not going to have any choice but to go it alone and do it ourselves. A very civil conversation between a Democrat and Republican Bill McGinley, the former White House uh, Cabinet Secretary and Democratic Congressional Candidate, Connor O'Callaghan. Thank you both uh, for your time and for your important uh, perspective with this ever-evolving 2024 campaign. Come back anytime. Uh, still ahead on the